Margaret, it's such a joy to be able to sit with you for a little bit today, not only because you're a founding member at Trinity, which we'll get to in a minute, but you've been kind of around Kelowna for a long time. What time did your family get to Kelowna? What year? Well, my parents came to Kelowna in 1939 um, with my brother and myself. Wow. And then at that time in 1939, I don't think Bernard or Kelowna looked much the same as it does today. What did it look like back then? Well, it certainly didn't. Downtown was mainly one street, which was Bernard, and the latter half of Bernard still had wooden sidewalks. <laughs> wooden sidewalks. Yes. And that wasn't even for aesthetics. That was just the way it was. Yes. <laughs> uh, that is amazing. And I'm sure as a, a family that came to Kelowna and being a family of faith, you joined a church. And what church was that? Well, my parents' first language was German. And the Grace Baptist Church in Kelowna ministered mainly in the German language. So that's where my family attended. Well, Margaret, I'm sure Grace Church for many families was uh, attractive because of that German language. But as you were growing older, something started to change within the church and some families. And it was related to kind of culture and language, wasn't it? Yes, it was. Yes, because the ministry was still mainly in the German language. Uh, and so many, for so many of us, German was not our first language. And it certainly wasn't the first language for our children. Mm -hmm. So we felt very restricted in that we couldn't reach out into the community. Um, and also for the sake of our children, we just felt it was time to organize another church. And so mm -hmm. those original families thought we need to kind of extend into the community and do it in a language that makes sense to those that we're hoping to minister to, which was English. And I think that was the beginning of where Trinity Church formed, wasn't it? Yes, actually, uh, Trinity was organized in the year 1961 with 72 charter members that came from the Mother Church Grace Baptist with their blessing and with their assistance. And we were recognized by the uh, North American Baptist Conference as a newly organized church and into the BC Association in that same year, 1961. That's pretty amazing, just in that short amount of time, how it just started growing. And it sounds like the impact was felt pretty immediate within the surrounding community. Oh, yes, very definitely so. And in fact, by 1968, uh, we realized that we are going to have to expand our facilities very soon. But having Sutherland on one side of us, Birch on the other, and the Mission Creek behind us, there was no room to expand on that original facility. And so um, we felt we had to make a move. And it just so happened that uh, the Salvation Army was looking for a site. And our facilities um, seemed to meet their requirements. So we sold that property and purchased on the corner of Springfield and Small. That sounds familiar to me, Springfield and Small, <laughs> Margaret. I think that's where we are today. Today, yes. And by 1971, we had built the first uh, church building on this site. You know, as you think back to those original <laughs> days in the early 60s, uh, you know, I... Uh, I would love if you could help us understand, you know, as those families, those 72 charter members got together, you know, what, what did they feel the vision that God gave them? Matter of fact, I think you have one of those original copies of that, don't you? I do. The original vision of the uh, charter members that went out in 1961 was to reach the community and to teach and equip our children for the Christian life. And when we uh, originally organized the church, we were a group of very naive people. We had no experience mm -hmm. in organizing a new church. Uh, we certainly didn't have the resources to organize anything like this. So when we stepped out to, into this adventure, we really had nothing but courage and faith. <laughs> and the Lord blessed. So, you know, Margaret, uh, as you... I have not only been there from the beginning, you were invited to join us as we wanted to believe for what God might help us uh, envision for uh, Trinity Church in 2024 and beyond. And so you were part of that 
crafting of our new statement, which is we equip to empower the next generation. And uh, as we were kind of unpacking that together and, and walking through that as, as a church, and it was a small group at the time, uh, that was the time that you pulled out this original statement and said, hmm, I've got something here. How, how does this new statement uh, resonate with you? Well, I looked at that new statement and I said, you know, it really hasn't changed from mm. the original statement. Mm. Our original statement was simply reach them and teach them. Mm. And that's what we're still doing. You know, Margaret, that uh, I think <laughs> speaks to how God has woven the story of Trinity throughout the generations and throughout the decades. Mm. And, and, you know, you being part of that original group and then being able to speak into what God might want to do in the future. And we all know it's a future that he holds, but that he's also crafting for Trinity Church. And so, uh, you know, how do you think as a church uh, we can uh, participate in this vision today, even if we can't see what's going to come in the days? Well, we just have to be faithful to the leading of the Lord. Hmm. And if we never compromise the word, keep telling it like it is, Hmm. keep reaching them, and teaching them, the Lord will continue to bless. Mm. Margaret, it's so encouraging to me how uh, we've been able to see God's hand woven throughout Trinity's story from the beginning up until today, Mm -hmm. especially how we need to depend on courage and faith. And our new vision is inviting people to courageously follow Jesus and we equip to empower the next generation. And for some of us, maybe we wonder, well, what can God do with what we have or how can God do it again today? But I've seen it and I think you've seen it firsthand. And as over the years, as we um, look back at the history of our church, I'm reminded once again um, how God can use make much out of our little. Mm-hmm. That's such a beautiful picture of what it's like, Margaret. And uh, I, res- I, I think for all of us, uh, we're delighted that you're still part of our faith community after all Thank these you. years and still investing. And for anybody that knows you, Margaret, you are a fireball. And, uh, <laughs> you know, from golf into getting your uh, air brake ticket in your late 60s to so many different <laughs> things. But uh, I think it would be fair to say that you still see yourself playing a role in our vision today as much as you did back in the 1960s. Oh, yes, definitely. What does that look like for you today? Well, I have to have a purpose for being here. Hmm. And that purpose is to each day um, try and follow the Lord's leading uh, and um, be an example of faith and an encourager. Mm. That I can still be for my family. You sure can, Margaret. And we're all one big family here at Trinity. And I think it's beautiful that uh, we all have a generation that's younger than us and a generation we can invest in. And so Mm -hmm. it doesn't matter what age we are, where we come from, that God invites us into that story. And it's exciting to believe what story he might tell over the years to come and that we can still be part of it. Thanks for being with us today, Margaret. It's such a pleasure just to be able to sit down and talk with you for a few minutes. Thank you. It's my pleasure for sure.